What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong. My name is Splattercat and I am stoked to have you here today. As we go, I think we were sneaking into a boss with this big stabber guy. I forget his name now. It's been a week since I recorded the last time. And I'm not even scheduled to record the game today. That's the funny part is I kind of just want to play. We're going into that's what it is. Bow Skull Crusher or whatever his name was. Bow the Strangler. I forget. He had a name that was very, very violent and sort of implied that he liked hurting people. In the previous episode, we had done some decking, and I had thought that maybe I should do some more decking, but unfortunately, we already triggered the alarm in there. We did get some pay data off the computer, though. We managed to hit up some data stores and earn ourselves some cash, money, grab us. So hopefully, once we get up out of here, we'll be able to actually, we got to find a fixer first if we're going to get rid of that. Or at least a data broker, which is going to be kind of difficult considering we're new in town and we don't know anybody. But by my assumption, actually, we do know a data broker. Isn't the, the old Chinese lady that gave us the job, isn't she... She's a she's a fixer, but I don't know if maybe yeah, we'll find out later. Either way, we need a contact to sell the data to properly. Welcome on back. I wasn't even scheduled to play the game today, but I just really, really wanted to play it. Because I'm only playing on this playthrough right now. I'm not doing anything on the side, so I don't want to spoil the game for myself. I want to experience the entire game with you guys here, and so I haven't played anything lately. And so, it has been very, very difficult. I have desired it greatly. What's going on in here? Let's get the lower levels right here, open doors, okay. Let's be very, very careful in here. We have no idea what kind of security outfit they're running. I would assume one that is tight and form-fitting and allows for maximum movement. A little bit of ambidextry, maybe some dexterity, but I wouldn't know. My outfit, for example, is mostly just metal plates and techno thingies and LEDs. Okay, there's nobody in here. What's inside this room? This room does not look safe to sleep in. I don't know if I could ever sleep in a bed that's that smudgy. Like, when you describe to me, let's say that I go to mattress discounters or something, they're like, I would best describe this mattress as smudgy. Ooh, $55 just laying on a crate. Man, that's great. Take that 55 and put it on my plate. It's going to be one of those days. I don't know. I'm not even supposed to be recording right now. That's the thing is that I just kind of want to. It's been a weird weekend for me. Like, every now and again, I get this weird thing where I, like... Let's see, the door has been sealed with a factory fresh mag lock, a high set keypad has been set into the frame. Okay, so since it's like a new mag lock, if you don't know, mag locks, essentially just magnetic locks in the future, except that like mag locks are known for their security. So much so that there's actually a skill set that pertains specifically to dealing with mag locks in some of the older versions. In the newer versions, I think they've streamlined it a little bit. I wouldn't know exactly, because I think the last time I played Shadowrun was like midway through 4th edition? I think the last rule set that I have are 4th edition, maybe. I don't know, do I have 5th? I don't, I, I buy, see, I never play, but I always buy the updated books for D&D, &D and for Shadowrun, and for all that kind of stuff anyways, and for like Pathfinder or whatever, because I never know when I'm going to end up playing, and I don't want to be that guy that doesn't have the manuals for two games, while I get them shipped to me from, you know, wherever on Amazon.com, so anyways, I tend to update my books, even if I haven't played in a while, and even if I really have no process, or I guess, I have no... I guess if I have no intention of playing anytime soon, I still update my books because I enjoy reading them and thumbing through them anyways. It's a SimSense vending machine. The SimSense machine has been left unlocked for restocking. There's a brief or there's a package data chip still in the tray. Alright, well we got a SimSense chip. That might be useful for something. Oh, okay, so we can actually sell it. So if you don't know, a SimSense chip is essentially it's like an experience packaged on a chip, basically. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It's kind of like BTLs and things like that. Similar, but different. So we've got that all locked on that side. Let's go ahead and take a... Ooh, there's no... Well, it looks like there's something right here. What does this do? That goes to the rooftops. What if I want to go to the roof bottoms? Like, what if I want a down-up view of it? Yeah, anyways, I was excited about playing the game today. Super, super excited. Like, I woke up and I was like, you know, it's Monday when I'm recording all this now. You probably won't see this till, like, next Monday because I'm pretty far backlogged. But it's Monday, and I was like, I just really don't feel like starting off with something where I've got to grind or do, like, a whole bunch of work first. Or it's like, nothing is going to take, like, all day. I kind of just want to play Shadowrun for a while and enjoy the storyline. So, go figure. Here we are. Those guards are still out there, Splattercat. The same guards that kindly doesn't want us killing. We should probably go out the way that we came in. Well, wasn't I supposed to leave something here for this dude? I'm almost positive that I was. So how do I get through that mag lock? That's my next question. Let's have a look here. Actually, no, he gave us the key code for the door, right? How many key codes do we have? So we have repair the walled city. 
Mission items. I don't think 5465 is still going to work. We already used that one, I thought. Oh, there it is right there. Okay, so I forgot that we have that one. The 7881. We must have pulled that one out of the matrix then. 788 Uno. Submit. That's right. Sometimes you must just submit your password when logging into a digital information service. Oh, there he is. He's got his short shorts on. He's got his sandals. He thought he was going for a siesta this weekend. No siree. About to send a message. A large man in his 50s stands waiting, his heavily tattooed arms held in a fighter's stance. His bone structure is heavy, corded muscle stands out on his arms and chest. In his youth, he must have been enormous. He doesn't talk so much as emit a low rumble. I don't know how you got in here, but you've got my attention. Well, I can say candy gram for strangler bow. Alright, well good, I have a message from Kindly Chang. A message from Chang? I can't wait to hear you mangle it. He chuckles to himself. You speak Cantonese so well. But before I hear it, I have a little message for her, too. You tell kindly Chang that her operations are done in the walled city. Strangler Bao has given himself a promotion. And tell her that if she sends any more errand boys to visit him with another message, Strangler Bao is going to send him back in a box. You think you could tell her that, errand boy? Should I write it down for you in English? <laughs> oh, come on, Strangler. Can I call you Strangler? We just want to hang out. Do triad stuff. <laughs> well, let's give him the data stick. I'm trying to stick to the job right now because I don't want to piss off my only contact in Hong Kong. Just slot the stick, listen to the message, and I'll be gone, okay? I don't get to hear you butcher the message? Hmm. I'm sad. He grabs a small plastic drive from your hand and slots it into his trid player. It's probably just blackmail. Kindly Chang stands erect and speaks directly to the camera. Mr. Bao, as everyone knows, you are a man of swift action, and I respect that. And because of that respect, I will get straight to the point. I know where your money is coming from. I know that you have friends working for straw sandals like myself. They have been siphoning funds from their organizations. I know about the noodle shop that you laundered the money through. I have tasted their broth and found it wanting. The old woman becomes flinty hard. You have been stealing from the Yellow Lotus and glorifying yourself with revenue that we have earned. And I have the files to prove it. Bao's eyes widen, or widen as flies begin to flit across the screen. Rec or files, I'm sorry. As files begin to flit across the screen. I'm like, man, it got dirty in here. All of a sudden there's flies everywhere. Receipts, bank reports, personal communications between himself and his men. Kindly Chang continues speaking, smooth and casual. Now... In light of our recent conflict, you might be wondering why I'm keeping this information to myself. Why haven't I exposed you so that you could be dragged from your lotus den by the balls and slowly roasted on a rotisserie spit? In truth, I respect your ambition. You have a lot to learn about candor and loyalty, but I believe that you still have value, and I'm willing to work with you. However, in order for that to happen, we need to come to an understanding about the nature of our partnership. Kindly Cheng steps forward and fills the screen. I own you, Bao. You and all of your men, you are my fucking playthings. Dolls to twist and pose as I see fit. I'm in this position because I am far better at this than you, and it's time that you learned it. Accept what I am telling you and we can get back to business. Prosper together. But if you continue your little rebellion, I will mail the tiny pieces of you to your children and take the picture, and take their picture as they open the package. She produces one of her thin black cigars, lights it, holds the smoke a long time. You have 24 hours to return to the fold. If you aren't here licking my heels by then, the information will be released, and you'll be food for fish. It's your choice, Bao. 24 hours. The message winks out. Strangler Bao turns away from the screen slowly. His skin is ashen. Get out. He pauses and casts his eyes to the floor. And tell Mrs. Chang to expect me at Swift Winds tomorrow. He stands up straight tomorrow morning. I let her know. Go, just go. Man, he broke quick for a gangster. He broke real quick. It's because his little arm ribbons right there, they're too tight, and so it constricts his body and he can't properly do dealings. That's why I don't wear my arm ribbons when I go out in public. I only wear them like a fancy girl when I'm in my room, like diddly hee. Dancing erect. Should we go out this way? Okay. Well, fine then. I won't go out that way. I figured that since we have a pass now, none of these men are going to mess with us, right? Because we're the dude. 
Like, we're the shit. We came up with it. All right, let's just go through the sewers. I know it's stinky, but we got things to accomplish. What is that right there? Is that a gibbet cage? Brutal. Anyways, I don't think it was a gibbet cage. I think it was just like a cage that was full of limes or something like that. But it seemed like a good conversational piece for the moment. I don't know. When it comes to recording, I've had like this weird thing that happens every now and again where you like dread recording. And not like in the sense that I don't like doing it, but you're just like, Ugh, I can tell I'm going to mess up this episode. This is not going to work out. So self-doubt is part of the creative process, kids. If you're doing YouTube right now, just know that it even happens to me and guys at my level. Every now and again, you sit down and you're just like, today is going to be a train wreck. Ultimately, though, it seems to have turned out, why are you just standing there like you're doing calisthenics, sir? Huh. Alright, well, enjoy yourself. I couldn't get that money back from that dude, so... I suppose I'll just have to walk away. Are we in Kowloon right now? I think we're in Kowloon at the moment. I don't remember how I came in here, but I think it was off in this direction somehow. Everybody around here with their swords and their guns, acting all hard, and their slouchy beanie hats and their weird shirts that look like something Lady Gaga would wear. Can't read my, can't read my, sh 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 shotgun shells. Shut, 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 shotgun shells, shut, shut, shotgun shells. That's one of my favorite Cartman routines is when he's singing Lady Gaga. <laughs> In his living room, they're playing as a guitar hero. That a rock band. <laughs> I'm a big South Park fan. I've watched it ever since the first season. I haven't watched it in a long time, though. I kind of fell off around the 12th or 13th season. 13th season, just haven't followed it anymore. Which is weird, because it used to be like a religious experience for me. Wu holds up his hand for everyone to stop. It turns to the two of you, and he hooks his thumbs in his belt. Well, that was a thing. I never thought I'd be shuttling messages between criminals in a Hong Kong syndicate. I can't imagine what Raymond would have wanted in the walled city. The place just feels wrong. Uh, it must have been important. He flew all the way here and hired runners for an escort. But why? The place makes you feel like your life has no value. Like, there's just no point to anything. He sighs and looks at your companion. Great life you have here. Gobbit ignores the barb and scratches her head. I can't believe it. We actually delivered the old lady's message without anybody dying. I've had enough of triads. Let's get out of this pit. I'm with you, gun show. I don't need to see this place ever again. Gun show? Seriously? Wu's goggles pan down. Come to rest on God, but that's not gonna stick, is it? Let's return to Hioi. Yeah, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but... Eh. It's gotta be, like, close, right? It does sound like a Hawaiian place, though. I mean, we gotta go to Hioi. Hold on. Hawaiian, actually, I love pigeon. Pigeon is one of the things, like, half my family speak pigeon. And it's just like fascinating to listen because I didn't grow up in Hawaii, and so anytime I'm with them, they're firing off left and right to me. We got six karma? Damn, son. They're firing off in pigeon or whatever else. It's pretty cool, though. It's pretty cool stuff. It's a dialect that most people are not familiar with unless they grew up in that environment. But we've got kitties. I forgot about you, kitty Batman. He kind of looks like Batman because of the configuration of his horns. I don't know. Although I will point out that in his portrait, half of his face is a robot face. What is this? Why is there an X on the ground? A large X formed by peeling duct tape. Why is there... A, I'm not going to stand on it. I feel like like an anvil is going to fall from the sky and be like, Donk! And hit me in the head. If you move out of the way, it's going to hit the trampoline and bounce back to the coyote and make him look... Do we need tech right now? What I learned from that last decking experience is that we really, really, really should have bought better stuff. What? You don't sell it? Shops close. Get law. Maximum law? Dude, that is the coolest name ever. That's like what I would expect a character's name to be in some kind of like violence prone judge advocate general type show. I used to watch JAG when I was a kid. Don't ask. I, it's a show in the United States about military tribunals and things that people were really, really into for a while. But Maximum Law is the stuff right there. He sounds like an anime character that would hang out with what's his name? Phoenix, right? I am Maximum Law. Although the pun is kind of obvious. I don't know. Let's go talk to what's her name? Kindly Cheng. Kindly Chenga. And hope that we don't get ourselves ruined here. I didn't kill anybody, Kindly Chang, Auntie. Kindly Chang watches you closely as you walk across the Mahjong parlor. As you approach her, her lieutenant leans in and brings her mouth close to the triad boss's ear. Chang smiles and nods, her eyes never leaving you. There's a twinkle in the straw sandal's eye. I've heard from Bao. He got my message very clearly, and I understand that there were no casualties created during your little delivery run. I am pleased and surprised. I'm going to try and dig Gobbit out of the flames here. you got to support your team. A good leader always gives credit for things that they're responsible for to other people and then accepts 
accepts blame even when it's not his. It's part of being a leader. And so anyways, Gobbit's been in a little bit of trouble with Kindly Chang, so I think I'm going to try and bail her out by talking her up. Gobbit did a great job of guiding us. A wry grin. Did she? Good to know. My message was delivered and Strangler Bao is back in the fold earning from me. As far as I'm concerned, our transaction is complete. While you were gone, I set the wheels in motion to wipe your identity. She pulls out her PDA, stabs a button with a lacquered fingernail. The order has been sent. Congratulations, you are now sinless, shadow people. Wu exhales heavily, his eyes remain focused straight ahead, but his shoulders sag. We'll figure a way out of this, Duncan. Wu pulls himself to his full height. There's only one way out of this Pop-Tart, and that's through it. Whoever gave the kill order on Carter also forced us to give up our identities and took Raymond. Wu sets his jaw for him, that's all I can think about, finding who did this, finding Ray. Kylie Cheng holds up a hand. While I was working to get your sins burned, I, always, or I also had my network look into Raymond Black's disappearance. She rests her PDA on the mahjong table facing you. The triad boss's tongue slips from her mouth as she looks over the top, hunting for the right button on its upside-down interface. She finds it and looks at you again. I have news to share with you, my darlings, the kind that you won't like. Raymond Black is dead. She taps the button and a recorded newscast appears on the screen. Raymond's photograph appears on screen behind a reporter standing on the docks in Victoria Harbor. It's a picture you've seen before. A professional portrait taken for a press release about a youth center he was opening in the Redmond Barrens. Under Raymond's photo of the world, Seattle man killed. Another shooting involving the police department. A Seattle community organizer and industrial engineer was apparently shot and killed while resisting arrest at Victoria Harbor last night. HKPF police report that the UCAS man, Raymond Black, was behaving erratically and would not respond to police orders to surrender. No additional information regarding Black or why he was traveling to Hong Kong are available. Police have stated that due to this shooting's proximity to last night's shootout with White Star, the investigation must remain confidential and no other details are being revealed at this time. Kindly Chang taps the button again and the video closes. Wu puts his hands to his face. This just keeps getting worse. Well, it definitely isn't getting any better. Raymond's dead. Wu puts his hand over his mouth, trying to process the information. He sways, and for a moment, it looks as though he's going to pass out. Isabel reaches out to touch Wu, but thinks better of it, pulls back her hand. I'm sorry for your loss. I never had a father, so... I don't know what it's like to lose one, but... You know, sorry. Alright, so yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Raymond dies the same night that we were ambushed? That's no coincidence. No fucking way. Kindly taps the video closed. She hunts around the keypad and selects another button. I'm afraid that's not all, my darlings. This security footage from Victoria Harbor from last night. You'll find that it contains... a contradiction. The PDA shows silent, grainy video footage of Raymond sitting in a tea shop flanked by two guards. He's looking down at something in his hand, completely distracted. The footage continues, and the camera displays several black-clad figures entering its field of view from different angles. Guns ready, a tall, sharply-dressed man in a suit walks briskly towards Raymond, flanked by two more. Raymond stands to face him, and the camera gets a clear view of the suit's face. White plastic. His guards turn to draw weapons, and muzzle flashes erupt from all sides. One of Raymond's guards goes down, and his submachine gun fires wildly, hitting the camera. Wu puts his hands on the table and leans in. Those weren't cops. And Raymond wasn't resisting arrest. What's with that guy's face? Gobbit reaches up to stroke the rat perched on her shoulder. Is that a mask? It doesn't look like a mask. It looks like some sort of semi-rigid plastic implant. Real craftsmanship. She pushes out her lower lip in appreciation. It's quite the fashion accessory. It's also the kind of fashion accessory that stands out in a crowd. This guy's either a fool or an arrogant son of a bitch. He sets his jaw firm. Either way, I'm going to find him. Kindly Chang watches Wu intently. I believe you. Wu stands back and turns to you. What now? Well. I don't want to be over emotional right now, which is that one right there. I also don't want to be cavalier and, you know, invent solutions. Instead, I'm just going to give a rough blueprint and say, yeah, we're going to find this guy, and then we're going to get some answers. With what resources? Chang's eyes sparkle. I'm afraid there's some facts you're going to have to face. She puts on a grave face. 
You were alone in this country. No network, no money, no identity. I can protect you from the police, but how would you go about discovering what happened to Raymond without me? How would you survive? This is a topic that requires serious consideration. Kindly wipes her hand across a stack of tiles, spreading the ivory-colored pieces across the table. You've had a very long night, my sweets. Very long. And frankly, you still look like shit. Rest now. I promise you safety in my town for the night. We'll talk about the plastic-faced man tomorrow. Kindly gestures to Gobbit and Isabel. Ladies, go find our new friends a place to bed down in that rat's nest squat boat you call home. We'll all talk after you've slept. Figure out our next steps together. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. Uh, she... I don't think so. We can actually say thank you. We can move. We can ask about the house. Or we can ask her a question. But since we already have an audience tomorrow, I wouldn't risk with a dangerous individual kind of like stepping. We just did a job for her, but I wouldn't guarantee that doesn't mean she won't send us floating downriver anyways. Deus Ex Machina aside, and assuming the protagonist can't be killed by conversational options, I still don't want to piss anybody off. So I'm going to play this realistically and just sort of roleplay my way through it. Thank you for your help, auntie. Of course, my sweet. Kindly Cheng smiles and her black button eyes flash cold. What are friends for? Alright, so we're off to the squat boat, I guess. Oh, wait, where am I in all this? Oh, they're all walking out. I thought that I was leading the... Man, I thought I was leaning the line. And right now, nope, not leading anything. Where's our squat boat at? Do people actually squat in the boat? Please don't tell me. You can at least squat over the side. You're right next to water. Just... <laughs> it's kind of like a toilet. Ocean is basically like a big toilet. If you expect, like, the continental area to be sort of like the bowl circumference, it works. Oh, we live on this thing over here. Damn, we got the good digs. Everybody else living in these tiny little pontoon boats. We'd be up inside this thing. Hell yeah. You two can bunk here for a while. She nods with her nose towards a hatch. The head's over there for you to take care of your, nece or your necessaries. It may look communal, but try to uh, knock before you enter. Seriously. I know the drill. Wu turns to you. Stinks of fish, just like that place we squatted at on Leary Avenue back when we were kids. The one with that Aslan family and their dog. You hated that dog. He kept digging out my food stash. No matter where I hit it, he'd find it scarfed down a week's worth of grub. He wipes his nose with a gloved hand. Still, it was sad what happened to him and the family. Nobody should go out that way. He stretches and his spine pops like a handful of firecrackers. I think I've been up for something like 36 hours straight. He drops his arms and this has been one shit stain of a day. It's time to end it. The orc turns to you and raises an eyebrow. Anything you need before I leave you to it? How'd you get your hands on this place? How do people like us get our hands on anything? We found it. You found it empty. He sweeps his eyes across the cab and the doubt is plain on his face. Somebody abandoned a prime piece of real estate like this. She shrugs. Close enough. It was full of BTL junkies when we came across it. They were completely wigged out on some multiplayer cyber game. I'm not sure that they ever chipped out of it. They were completely emaciated, stewing in piles of their own shit. Their eyes had sunk into their skulls. Some pretty gruesome stuff. They racked up a killer score, though. True. They had the moves. Should have hung an IV while they were playing, though. Turns out nutrition is important. So what happened? Did they die? She shrugs. Nightjar ran him out. Not sure what happened to him after that. Anyways, it's ours now. Auntie Chang says so. Oh, but the engine room, you mean? Right, everything but that. Auntie rented that out from under us. That must have pissed you off. She shrugs. Whatever, we weren't using it. As long as our downstairs neighbor keeps to himself, he can have the lower level, especially if he keeps Auntie Chang happy. So is there a place for my stuff? Yeah, check the locker over there. You can stash your stuff in it. No one will touch your things in here, and it's a lot bigger than it looks. Is it just you and Isabel? Yeah, Gobbit's mouth screws up a bit. Now that Nightjar and Gutshot are gone, it's just us. The squeal of metal grinding on metal rips through the boat. It sounds like it's coming from the level below. And the creepy Russian guy renting the engine room downstairs. Nothing to worry about. He mostly keeps to himself. She checks her PDA. He'll stop soon. He's usually quiet by now. Alright, well, I'm going to grab some sack time, too. Good, you look like you could use it. We'll go see Kindly in the morning, figure out our next move. That's it for me. This is going to be the end of our episode. Check the game out down below in the description if you wanted to pick it up. My name is Splattercat. This is Shadowrun Hong Kong. I will see you all later. Thank you for joining me, ladies and gents.